Yep, you guessed it, people. We have the four fingers of death in the house. Let's do this. Hey, everybody. Yes, we do. We are lucky enough and fortunate enough to get an older version of an MRE that I used to get when I was in the Army called Frankfurters. Uh, for us, they were known as the Four Fingers of Death because there were four hot dogs, or some people also called them the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse because these things just had such a stigma. This thing was graciously sent to me by none other than Sticky Fingers 745 so make sure that you check him out as well if you haven't. And this is not the original OG brown bag version that I had in the Army. This is a uh, early to mid-2000 version. But let's bust into this thing and see what we got. And right off the bat, this is menu number six. Frankfurter beef, or beef frankfurters. Has a peelable seal, and this one was from Right Away Foods in Cowan, Texas. Let's check to see how our skills are with the peelable seal. Sometimes I'm good. Some, sometimes these things are a pain in the tuchus to open up. And you can see they definitely fail at times as well. Which, that is why they are a pain in the butt half the time. And that's kind of cool. We have a little bit of the new school and old school action going on inside of this ration. Pull everything out of there. Good to go. Let's see if we can find a date code on one of these boxes. Well, grabbing that, I'm looking at this date code. I see a six, and I was thinking 2006. It's actually 1996, and I used my handy reference for mreinfo.com and confirmed it. So this is not early 2000. This is actually from 1996, the 124th day. So we got some beef frankfurters. A little content sheet got some other info on there as well and the one thing that I noticed it was this old school MRE heater talk about pretty neat this is oh okay got some crackers peanut butter beverage base powder we'll see what kind this is it's on the back side it says great charms candies uh, these are good. They do provide you with a little energy, but for some reason, every time that we would get them, it would be hot, 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 and they would just melt all over the place. MRE spoon. Has some potato sticks, and of course, the accessory packet. Take a look at that in a second. <laughs> and then we have some pineapple. Hmm. So let's bust into this real quick. Let's see what we got. Of course, a little bottle of Tabasco sauce. Looks like it is still nice and fluid. That's good to go. Lemon flavored iced tea. Looks like we have some sugar or something. Nope. Jeez. Some moist towelette. And then some creamer. Salt. TP. Of course your matches. And lastly, some gum. Now I know this looks like a lot of food, but looking at the actual weight of these contents, your protein, you're only getting 3.8 ounces of proteins, and your your highest weight item is your pineapple. And then you get some potato sticks and some crackers with some peanut butter. Yeah, I could see why this probably wasn't all that popular when <laughs> I was in when we had this ration. I would have rather had like the barbecue beef or the ham slice or something substantial that I could really eat and really fortify me while we were out in the field. Well, let's get our hot dogs heated up and make our drinks. Start off with the longest part, so you know it's going to take this thing up to 15 minutes to heat. You can see four fingers of death right there. Hopefully this heater will uh, still be viable, and it should be because I don't see any of these little filings that are inside this cardboard discarded down here on the bottom like I've seen with some of the other types of these.
and then about an ounce, ounce and a half of water. We'll fold that up and we'll stick it under a rock or something. Now one thing I should have done before I poured the water in there, if you put a little bit of your salt in with your water, it, it kind of makes it into a saline solution because this isn't really activating, but I'm going to toss a little salt in here and see if that helps it take off a little bit. And we'll see if that helps just a little bit. It actually started heating up, so I stuck it back into its uh, cardboard container to help retain some of that heat. And our grape drink requires 12 ounces of, of water. So you can see what it kind of looks like. It looks a little weird, but what the heck. I don't recall it looking like that with dark specks in it. And then 12 ounces of water. Give that a mix with our spoon. This is actually what a grape drink is supposed to look like. And then the iced tea drink mix, you mix that with 11 ounces of water. Okay, pretty much got everything else down. I have no clue what you would use the creamer with in this particular ration, but let's take a look at our chiclets gum. This looks like it is definitely the peppermint kind. Spearmint is usually white. And our potato sticks, I don't imagine these things have changed very much over the years. So, yep, have an oxygen absorber in these. They look like they might be salted a little bit. Then we got the peanut butter. Make sure that you need the heck out of this stuff if you have one of these old ones. I mean, this is 21-year-old peanut butter. And uh, if you have a peanut allergy, I really shouldn't have to say this, do not eat this. I almost feel like I'm obligated to say it. And the whole reason why we're mixing this up is to get the oils mixed back up into that peanut paste or the actual butter. Let's take a look at the crackers. It looks like I've got a decent seal on them. However, I'm always kind of nervous about opening up oil crackers because you just never know if you're going to get that ammonia kind of type smell. Let's see if we can hear the kiwi dude hiss. Oh, wow. You could. I heard it. Uh, let's give them the good old sniff test. They don't really have that bleachy smell. They have more of that old, stale, IRP kind of cracker smell. And incredibly, they are both unbroken. That's shocking enough for a 21-year-old MRE. Now, I know some of these old ones, some of them were salted. It doesn't look like this is one of the salted kind but let's grab our peanut butter and squeeze a little on here boy that peanut butter I don't know it looks okay it smells okay we'll give it a try we'll see how it goes and part of the curiosity is wondering how these things were stored usually with these charms if this was stored under high heat conditions this is going to be one large sticky mass. And I'm just trying to open it. You can see how all that stickiness and sugar leaches out because this stuff is sticking all over to me. And you can see some definite color change on those charms. And then our pineapple. I'm <laughs> kind of interested to see what color this is going to turn out. Ordinarily, pineapple is a nice golden color. And these feel like more like uh, pineapple slices. I'm wondering if it's what kind of shade or hue of brown this might turn out to be. Oh, I'm, I'm getting a little sneak peek 
right there. I'm just trying not to have a sticky, I mean, uh, a Nathan MRE incident where this blows all over everything. Ew. Oh, that didn't sound very pleasant. I don't know about you, but that doesn't that doesn't look very appetizing to me. And there's still more in there. The smell coming off those things, whew, man, no bueno, no bueno at all. Maybe I found a need for our Tabasco sauce. Maybe I can actually put it on this and try to save it. Yeah, I don't think I'm really being serious. Still smells like Tabasco. That's a good sign. Let's grab those Frankfurters. Actually kind of impressed. Added that salt in this thing. Really did kind of hook up. You can actually see the condensation in the bag. It has been like about 12 minutes. And I am just ready to get going. So that is what we're going to do. I'm not expecting these Frankfurters to be... Actually, they are pretty warm. They're pretty warm. Let's try not to get any of this stuff on this on the tray and of course like everything else in the army you would think that they'd put the tear notches on this side where there's no food but of course they're on this side okay again I'm trying to do this gently so I don't pour any of this residue onto the tray and it's probably one of the other good reasons why I never used these uh well we did we weren't issued them first place with our MREs but the four fingers of death man well before they cool down let's give them a try you can see they're smaller than average frankfurters but beef frankfurters nonetheless looks like a hot dog that you would get out of the store and we will give it a try i recall this having a very high sodium content let's see if that remains true in 1996. Yeah, almost exactly what I remember. It's, it's almost like they were soaked in a brine, like an assault brine, and there's kind of like a, I don't, just to me, kind of like a little vinegary kind of aftertaste. If you can imagine a Vienna sausage that, well, they pretty well, pretty much all taste terrible, but multiply that horrible taste by 10, 12 maybe, you would kind of understand what these hot dogs are like. Uh, very salty, very processed, imagine that. And it, it literally is like a Vienna sauce. As soon as you eat it, it just kind of crumbles apart. It doesn't stay firm. Uh, man, this is not really all that. I can see why this was definitely not one of my favorites. Yeah, that's pretty darn horrible. Let's try it with a little bit of Tabasco sauce. Uh, maybe that'll wake it up. Uh, I almost, maybe if it'll come out of the, oh, wow. That's a nice brown Tabasco sauce color. Already have some on the spoon. Oh, the, the, even the smell of the Tabasco sauce is a little off. I almost have to think somebody replaced the Tabasco sauce with Novocaine because I, I don't think it's psychological, but I actually kind of have like a numb spot in my mouth, which is probably not a good thing. And a really good idea why I have activated charcoal just sitting right off of screen. I'm going to take some of this grape drink and try to wash that taste out of my mouth. Yeah, you pretty much have to give me an Article 15 if you want me to eat one of these. But I'll be telling you to go piss off right to your face, Sergeant, or Lieutenant, or Captain. Yeah. Oh, man. And then we have this pineapple. I guess that's what it still is. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's not good. That's not good either. And the lemon tea doesn't mask it. The pineapple membranes are still in effect. When you first, 
when it first goes in your mouth, you're like, oh, well, this isn't so bad. And then you, and then you bite into it. You just have to experience for yourself. Imagine eating kind of a citrusy worm. And it's got all of that sand mineral stuff in it. Hard to explain. No bueno again. I hope I'm not disappointed by this cracker. Because this might be the only thing that's worth actually eating. I'm starting to think that Sticky Fingers sent, it, sent this to me as punishment. I know some of my uh, UK friends would tell me that they keep the peanut butter, so like when they're on road march, they just eat it right out of the packet. This stuff is so dense and just sucked all the moisture out of my mouth. You guys would have to drink one of your whole water bottles to just get a tad bit of moisture back. This one is brutal. Mm. At least the grape drink that I was concerned about those little black specks, which please don't let there be a concern with the black specks. But this is actually tastes pretty darn good. It's and look at the color. It's actually great instead of what you get nowadays where the grape kind of looks blue. I mean, what the heck's up with that? Take a look at these pretzel sticks. And it looks like they were roasted well or fried well beyond their needed time. They have just the lightest dusting of salt, so that's not too bad. And then these charms mass, and you can see where they've leached out of their individual wrapping a little bit. But these cherry ones were always some of my favorites. Well, these and the orange ones, actually. Let's try to get it out of this wrapping. And this was, pro this was always part of the problem, trying to field strip these things. There would always be little bits of plastic still stuck in here. And I know most of us, we would just say, screw it. And just uh, toss it in your mouth anyway. And when you got to the plastic bit, finally came out, you just spit it out. Well, it still tastes like charms. I can't believe the kind of following there are with these. You, some people pay big bucks for a thing of charms. I, I, don't, I don't get the mystique. Maybe it's because... You know, I had the honor of eating them when I was in the service, and I, whatever. I'll just take a thing of Lifesavers, and voila, same thing. They did taste fine. I, was, I wasn't really surprised with that, but I'm going to take another thing in my, uh, pull of my grape drink. So far, this has been the best thing in the ration. And what the heck, we'll try our peppermint chiclet. Maybe the correct term should have been peppermint jawbreaker. I think that's more accurate. Well, everybody, as you can tell, this one was definitely not one of my favorite reviews or favorite menus. But this was a review of menu number six of a 1996 MRE Frankfurter's Beef. Affectionately known as the Four Fingers of Death or the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Still... One of my least favorite MREs of all time. All that being said, thanks for hanging with me. More stuff to come, and I will see you all on my next review. Bye. <laughs>